Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. We've got no Ascot, we've got no Haydock, we've got no Taunton, but on Saturday we have the all-weather to look through. But on this show we're also going to be covering some racing from Sunday, just to give you guys a bumper preview there, watching and listening at home. Lingfield is going to be our point of call for both days. Obviously, we've got the Winter Millions Festival. We've missed the first day of that due to the weather conditions, but we have all weather action on Saturday and National Hunt action on Sunday, where we see the uh, return of Lom Press. But we will do our best to try and find some winners anyway this weekend. Brett Williams joins us once again from Unibet. Brett, how are you? And uh, Look, it's not the best weekend of racing, but we can get through it and hopefully find some winners. Yeah, I'm very well, uh, thank you. So, yeah, it's been a real tricky week, hasn't it, for, for Clark. So the courses up and down the, the country, obviously, Chris Tickles at, at Ascot, they, they just tried to get that Clarence House meeting on, but you, you just knew it was doomed from sort of Tuesday and Wednesday, didn't you? And, and a similar story up at Haydock, Kirk and Tara and his team there. And Taunton, who, of course... Uh, were late abandonment and on sort of around midday on Friday. It's been a real tricky time for, for all the jumps tracks, but you know, thankfully we've got some some decent, you know, some competitive all weather action mm. um, at the weekend. Lots of good offers from Unibet, and let's just keep our toes and our fingers crossed that the the final day of the Winter Millions goes ahead at Lingfield on on Sunday, because as you said, could be some top class jump racing action there as well. Yeah, an inspection on two o'clock at uh, Saturday at Lingfield, so we'll be having fingers crossed that that does go ahead and Brett will be taking us through all the offers for each races if there are any during the show. We kick off on Saturday in the two o'clock at Lingfield then on the all weather which is a handicap over one mile class three event where Talis Evolver is four to one favourite with Unibet. Dragon Icon is nine to Fantastic Fox six to one. Al Ruffer is 13 to two. Trope Power and Planet Dream is 17 to two and double figures are these now i'll go to tom park i haven't seen tom park for a little while on this show tom how are you and uh who's going to win this first race that we're covering on the all weather yeah very good thanks shame about the racing but um i have to say when you said that there was um that we were covering the all weather i kind of feared the worst when i was about to look into the cards but there's some good races isn't there at lingfield like it's quite competitive action so um yeah i'm quite looking forward to it and um yeah i'm gonna opt for the old boy and um in the opener, uh, Plant a Dream. Um, he's travelled so sweetly in his last couple of races at Kempton, where he's went off at massive price. I think he was 50 to 1, 33 to 1. But he goes well at Lingfield. Uh, form figures of 2 1, 2 2. So he likes it. Yeah, he's drawn one. Um, and he likes to sit in. I quite like horses at Lingfield that come from off the pace. Um, and he'll look, he's looked, he's looked threatening on his last couple of starts. Um, I thought he was a little bit unlucky last time. Perhaps just left it a little bit late to grab Havlin, but he'll get um, he gets another go on him here. Um, and I just think he'll be flashing late. And he's a decent price. I think he might drift as well, given the, the his age and connection. So he'd be one that, um, yeah, I think he's got a good each-way chance. Okay, plant a dream for Tom Park. And there was a big flick of the wrist and a nod from Robbie Wilders there. Yeah. Robbie, sounds like you're in the same camp here. Uh, yeah, two endorsements, mate. Quite like plant a dream here. Um, yeah, he's caught the eye, like Pike, Parky said, on his last uh, couple of runs following a very long layoff. He clearly retains a lot of the ability he used to have a few years ago. Uh, course form figures are 2 1 2. I'd imagine this has probably been the target. Probably working, working back from these first couple of runs, they weren't, those races weren't as lucrative as this one. The only thing I'm really worried about is um, Stall 1 because he does like to be held up and if he sort of gets caught in a pocket at the inside. but. I think he is a well handicapped horse. His mark's coming down. And um, yeah, if, with a bit of luck in running, I think he's, he's definitely going to be in the frame. Okay, plant a dream. Two votes for this horse here. We go to Brett Williams now. And Brett, we do have a money back offer from 9 a.m. tomorrow morning on this race. Is that correct? Yeah, so the good thing is if you're betting with Unibet, uh, we will be giving you a money back as cash if you back the second or the third in this race. And as an extra Brucey bonus for you, we will be paying four places each way as well so money back second or third and four places each way which sort of makes it a little bit easier if you look at trying to get a little bit of bit of, bit of value um our sort of flat ambassador richard hannon's got two runners um in this race talis evolver and also um for for Cotomeo. um talis evolver is obviously a, a, a pretty interesting horse improving you know coming nicely through the ranks here off a mark of 91 so has i think got to improve a little bit but you just look there and see Ryan Moore having his first rise of the winter 
at Lingfield on Saturday. That's obviously a very positive jockey book in the fact they've got Ryan um, on board. He's actually got four rides on the card um, uh, on Saturday. I quite like Dragon Icon, though. Um, of course, last run in the, the German 2000 Guineas. This isn't a 2000 Guineas. This is back in the handicap class. Um, but very unexposed, got the hood on for the first time. I'm never too concerned about Roger Varian's horses coming back from a layoff. I think he can get them pretty fit first time. So Dragon Icon, you know, an interesting selection for me. And at a slightly bigger price, I like um, Tropez Power. Um, I think can improve for that first run at, um, at Newcastle this year. Finished behind Dear My Friend. Showed some smart form in the summer. So Tropez Power at a bit of a bigger price. But I do think the most likely winner is Dragon Icon. Okay, Dragon Icon for Brett Williams there. And, he, and Brett's mentioned Ryan Moore at Lingfield. Four rides. I think punters are definitely going to be getting stuck into Ryan Moore at Lingfield. You wouldn't often see him there. Let's move on to the 2.35 then at Lingfield. This is a five furlong handy. Have a class two event where Unibet at the time of recording have Diamond Spirit as the 9-2 favourite. Silky Wilkie is 6-1. to one. Bergerac also 6-1. to one. Bedford Flyer 13-2. to two. Alligator Alley and Clearpoint 7-1. 15-2 about Chipstead, 9-1 and bigger about the rest of the field. Robbie Wilders, I'll come to you. I had, I had a look at this and I actually looked at Clearpoint at one stage and thought, I remember getting really excited about this horse as a two-year-old. It hasn't quite happened since then. We now see this horse in a Class 2 handicap on the all-weather. He caught the eye a bit, but there's some decent five furlong all-weather handicappers in here. Yeah, it doesn't take much to excite you, pal. I'm, I'm going for <laughs> Bergerac. I'm going two-handed. <laughs> I'm going for Bergerac's the first one. Um, this horse has been on a big upward curve on his last couple of starts. The horse he beat last time, higher mate. Um, I think it's meant to be a higher mare in like Northern. Um, one by five lengths on his next start. That horse is wrecked 10 pound higher now. Bergerac's up five pound. Just a really, really progressive horse. I mean, he actually was rated around this sort of mark uh, a couple of years ago, but he's just really refound really his form. And he's got quite a nice draw and stall too. Uh, the other one, I can't resist in case there is a pace collapse because there's a lot of speed here. Is Zarzini in stall 10? Uh, he's got the first time blinkers on, but you know, he's just on a very good mark. He's down to 84. I mean, this time 16 months ago, he was rated 104. His all weather course, his all weather form figures, sorry, read 3 2 2 2 2 3. He's never run an RPR below 93 on the all weather. He's off 84. I think he's well treated, and if they do go too hard up front, he could capitalise after quite a decent comeback at Wolves in January. Okay, a couple to look forward to there in the five final handicap from Robbie. Brett, I'll come to you next. Who's going to be winning this one? Well, I think Robbie's actually been reading my notes because I've pretty much written down everything that he said with, with, well, regards, to, with regards to Zarzini. Yeah, he said he's very well handicapped for his first time. Uh, could, could be very interesting. Um, I quite like Clearpoint as well. I know you touched on that one. I remember, I think someone gave it gave me a tip for this horse when it was first time out for Richard Fahey and absolutely yeah. hosed up and then they were looking at Royal Ascot and I don't think he actually ever made it there but you know he, he was campaigned at a higher level after that so he could be quite interesting um but yeah Bergerac for me the horse who's in, you know improving um through the ranks you know in good form um and we actually this is one of our price boost races as well so we will, we will be boosting one of the runners um in this but yeah so I think Bergerac for me uh, in what's a pretty tricky race, I think probably this. I think imagine that um, Diamond Spirit the ceiling has probably been reached with, with, with this source now, and then won its last 25 starts up to mark of 85 now. Although I suppose the services of Holly Doyle is, is not to be sniffed at. Okay, Bergerac for Brett Williams, but it sounds like Zarzini's the one to keep an eye on in this race at a, a bigger price. And Tom Park, you're going to finish us off off here. Who's going to win this? It's a good race, this isn't it? Like, there's quite a few um, like popular names from the. The turf scene. So, um, mm. yeah, the one I like is Bedford Flyer. Um, another who really likes it here at Lingfield. Form figures of one, one, four, two, one. The latest of them, he absolutely bolted up. Um, it was a small run of field. Um, he was put up seven pounds as, as a result, but he's been as high as a hundred in the past. So, still some scope, I think, in his mark of ninety-three. Um, excuses for his two defeats since his next start, Newcastle Way, faced quite a few of these. Probably came a little bit too soon. He kind of he hit the front that day and just um, just got tired at the finish. But that was just nine days after his win at Lingfield. I think Connections were trying to take advantage of of the penalty that he got as opposed to the seven pound rise. Um, but he faces a few of them here. I'd fancy him overturn the form with them. Um, then he bumped into a, a proper group horse, I think, in Clarendon House on his next start. Um, ran well to be second. 
Um, I just think there's there's a good chance he's still well handicapped off 93. He's got good draw in one. Not always the quickest out of the stalls, but he pulls quite hard early on. So I think even if he was to kind of miss the break, I, I could still see him holding this position, which is often the, the problem being drawn one um, in a 5 for us. He likes to go from the front um, or it'd certainly be up with the pace. I think he's got a good chance, Bedford Flyer. OK, Bedford Flyer in the 2.35 for Tom Park. We now move on to the 3.10, which is the Winter Oaks Phillies Handicaps. One mile, two furlongs here in a Class 2 event. And oh so grand is top of the market at 9-4. Twirling is 4-1. to one. The Chrisford's dominating the top of the market here. Miss Bluebell, 11-2. Storymaker, 11-2. Behind the scenes is 7-1. Queen Regent, 10-1. 11-1 about an Eleanor Cross and 16-1. And bigger the rest. Brett, it seems like it's all about the Chrisford's runners here. And we've already mentioned Ryan Moore. He's on the uh, the outside of the two of the Chrisford runners here. Who do we fancy? Yeah, um, it's a good race, isn't it? There's this £51,000 to the winner here. So, you know, people tend to, to, to not be all weather. But this time of year to get a race at this value is, you know, you know, big ups to all of those concerned. It is a very good race. It's very competitive. You, you, a lot of them are sort of just improving um, through the ranks. Storymaker is one of those sort of in winning class fours and five. So this is a, a big step up um, for her. Oh, so grand holds a few of these on form, but she doesn't hold um, Queen Regent on form. They, 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 they fought out the finish at Lingfield a couple of starts ago. Um, Queen Regent is actually slightly better off at the weights um, on this occasion. Uh, Rab Havlin rides for John and Thady Gosden. Um, she's got the cheap pieces on for the first time as well, which may just eke out that little bit more sort of out of her. Um, she, you know, she's pretty consistent. And um, for me, Queen Regent is the one, is the one to side with in what's a you know a really good race. Looking forward to actually, which is I never thought I'd be saying I'd, look, I'd be looking forward to an all weather race at this time of the year, but I am. Flat racing's coming, Brett. Don't worry. Sixty four days till the Lincoln. Not that I'm counting down. Tom Park, who's going to be taking out the Winter Oaks Phillies handicap? Yeah, I slightly disagree with Brett in the sense that I, I was pretty taken by also Grand's win um, against Queen Regent. I know she did a lot wrong um, and she was absolutely powering home at the finish. Um, she only got bumped up four pounds. I kind of think there's there's still plenty of um, plenty of improvement in her to come. Um, Trainer won this last year, so you, as you'd expect, this has probably been the plan for a long time, given the prize money. Um, as you mentioned, he also trains twirling. Um, she probably looked to make all. I think she'll be the one who's likely to go from the front. And as I said, I, I do quite like horses over this kind of distance who, who come from off the pace at mm. this particular track. Um, so yeah, I'm going to side with also Grant. I, I was I was pretty taken. I, I was surprised the handicapper only bumped her up for. I think I think there's plenty more to come from her. Okay, oh so grand for Tom Park and Robbie Wilders finishes off in the free ten. Yeah, see the case of oh so grand did uh, did quite well. Winning from where she came from last time, second last turn, and then did it really, really cosily. Um, I don't know. Just, just looking at the prices, I can't understand how Twirling is sort of second favourite, but then Daisy is the rank outside of the field, considering Daisy finished ahead in front of her at Lingfield last time. Uh, that was Daisy's first run back for a new yard, and all her forms before that is over a mile two. She's won at Salisbury over a mile two, which is a pretty stiff track. And she's definitely going to be better over these extra two furlongs. I'm not I'm not sure Twirling's guaranteed to, to stay an extra couple of furlongs. She might well do at Lingfield, to be fair. But I don't know. I can't really understand that discrepancy. And uh, the trainer, Barry Brennan, is one from one over the last fortnight. He had a 15 to 2 winner yesterday. So uh, that's the one that I can see coming in for money, Daisy. OK, Daisy, the outside of the whole field for Robbie Wilders at 16 to 1 with Unibet. For Go on, Brett. I'm just going to say, I should just alert our viewers that we are super boosting the price of every single runner in that race. So you will get the best slot. So that's one of our super boost races there at Lingfield. OK, so you get a really big price about Daisy currently. So, yeah, I think that's from, is that from 9am tomorrow, Brett, on Saturday morning? Yeah. OK, perfect. So 9am Saturday morning, you can get all the horses in that race super boosted with Unibet. Let's move on to the final race at Lingfield that we cover on the all-weather. It's the 345, which is a two-mile handicap, and this is a Class 5 event. Not often we'll be covering Class 5 events here on the postcast, but look, we are. Market looks like this with Unibet. Two past eight is the 4-1 to favourite. Joint favourite of Havana Zam, also at 4-1. to African star, 9-2. to LaRue Chimois is 11 to 2. Grain of Hope, 13 to 2. Man of Riddles, 15 to 2. Gordon Gray, 9 to 1. 16 to 1. And bigger about the rest of the field. And Tom Park, I'll start with you. Who wins this Class 5 event on the all-weather? Yeah, I'll be honest. I think I mentioned it to you in the build-up <laughs> to this. So, 
I don't mind getting stuck into a couple of class twos on the all weather um, at this time of the in the middle of the jump season. Uh, but yeah, class fives over two mile, not to seventies, not really my um, not really my mantle really. So I'm I'm happy to kind of I'm ho- hopefully Robbie's got some, um, but if I don't want to put anyone away thinking that trying to kind of get stuck into this, but um, hopefully Robbie's got some um, mm. some insight into the into this conundrum. Come on, then, Mister. Well, Williams. I'm. Unlike Mr. Park, I'm very happy to put people away. And I'm going to do that <laughs> with African Star. Uh, this horse is only rated 69, but you look at his pedigree, he's rated to a couple of 100-plus performers. Uh, we've not seen loads from him. He's quite lightly raced for Sylvester Kirk. But he's actually been running quite well lately. He's definitely open to further improvement as a stayer. Uh, quite often when horses aren't good enough to win handicaps over a mile and a half, they tend to have sort of enough speed when they move up in trip. I think he's worth a try at it. And uh, he returns to the scene of his maiden win here at odds of 80 to 1 last August. So I think he's probably the most interesting runner. But it's tough, isn't it? It definitely is in a class five event. African star around nine two of Univet currently. And Brett Williams, you're going to end the all weather action, hopefully, with a winner. Yeah, well, the good thing is, you know, if you're missing your jump racing, you've got Alan King represented, you've got Emma Laval, you've got Lydia yeah. Ritz, you've got Tom Simmons, so you've got all your jump trainers and you've got two milers. You've got a few horses that have been running over hurdles and, and back on the flat, um, notably two past eight, actually, as you said, just about um, favourite at the moment. Um, I'm not entirely convinced about this one. I think he's had six runs on the flat, two of them on your weather, still a maiden, so yet to get his head in front. Um, I agree that African Star has to be of interest stepping up in trip. Um, you know, has been doing nothing wrong and, you know, reasonably consistent. Um, but I do think Havana Zam is, is the most likely winner here for Callum Shepard and, and, and Tom Sims. You know, I thought it was impressive last time um, over over this trip, oh, sorry, over, over a mile and a half at Wolverhampton, one going away. Um, isn't that much higher, only a four pound rise um, in the weights. Um, as I said, it, it, the race where I think the favourite is quite vulnerable. I do think Havana Zam is the one to side with here. Okay, Havana Zam to finish things off with on the all weather for Brett Williams. Now, we are slowly, as much as we're talking about the all weather, slowly leading in to Cheltenham. There's no better time to sign up to Racing Post Members Club. Our app is continuing to improve. Members Club is now available on the app, and you can now get race replays available. If you haven't already, update the app, and you can get race replays on the app. And if you haven't already signed up to Members Club, why not? Check this out. Welcome back to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet, Sam Hart, Tom Park, Robbie Wilders and Brett Williams taking you through the weekend action. We take a trip across to Sunday's racing now, the Winter Millions Festival. This is the final day of the festival and it's all national hunt action. We'll see Tom Park probably more excited about this than the all weather, I'm hoping. We kick things off with the 115 there, which is the Lightning Novices Chase, a grade two event over two miles the betting with unibet currently looks like this matata's five to two jello is three to one master chewy also three to one jpr one is 130 and pembroke is seven to one come on then parky who wins this lightning novices chase it's a good race this is a belting race isn't yeah. it it really is um i love jello um like as a horse he's i've had some luck with him this season um and just a big fan of the horse that said sentiment can be a punter's worst enemy and he, he might have a job on his hand giving five pounds to jpr1 here um and just at the, at the prices as well i think jello's considerably shorter than um jpr1 forgive me i wasn't really listening when you were reading out the prices there so forgive me if i'm wrong there but he went at the time of study and he was a little bit shorter um yeah he's got to give five pounds um just think that jpr1 is out of all of these he's the one who i think could well turn out to be like a one who's maybe competing in the article i'm not sure jello as likable as he as he is um is he much better than his current Mark of 149, maybe a few pounds. I think JPR1 potential is a little, his ceiling's a little bit higher. Um, obviously, a couple of major jumping errors have perhaps cost him his last two races. Whether he'd have won in the Henry VIII last time, I'm not so sure, but it certainly didn't help his chances 
came at an awkward time, I think two out when he just pecked on landing, all but ended his chance there. And then he was going to absolutely hose up at Cheltenham the time before. Um, I think that's good form. Um, and yeah, just getting that five pounds from Master Chewy and, and Jello here, I think he's just about the one to side with. Um, I feel a bad abandoning Jello, and no doubt he'll make me pay for it. Um, but that tends to be how these things go. But yeah, I'm gonna it's JPR one for me. Okay, JPR one for Tom Park. You could make a case for all of these Robbie Wilders, couldn't you? You could definitely see either of these when you wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it's a really good race. Um, it's definitely much looks much better than when it used to be hosted at Doncaster. Um, they used to sort of attract a lot of odds-on favourites, but you won't get that this year. They're going three to one the field. Um, I thought the one to beat was actually Matata. And he gets weight from Jello, Master Chiri and Pembroke. But he's actually produced the best RPR by four pounds, courtesy of his handicap second to Liberty Hunter last time. I think that's that's going to work out as a really good handicap form. And it was his first start following about an 80-day break. I think he's probably going to step forward from it. And um, to, to me, he's probably the most likely winner. But it is tricky. It definitely is. Matata for Robbie Wilders. Brett Williams, the 115 at Lingfield. Who wins this? Yeah, I think just to echo your sentiments, that this this is a real top notch of a race, and you can you can really make a case for all of them. I don't want to I don't want to rule out like Pembroke, but I imagine that is the most unlikely winner because when a couple of races and sort of <laughs> been winning walkovers and egg and spoon races and so forth, so you can probably draw a line through him. But the rest of them, you can really give a strong chance to. As you said, Nigel Twist and Davis got a strong hand in it. I quite like his other one, though, to be honest. Um, Master Chewy, that was a, that was a good win at um, in the way we'd lad it at Kempton last time. Rock solid effort. Um, I think as well, interesting. This horse was actually entered in the two mile handicap uh, handicap chase, um, and this race. So the fact that they're sort of uh, competing this grade is, has obviously got to be quite um, significant. Um, Yellow holds that horse on a little bit of form from Aintree, Tree. Um, in November, so they're quite closely matched. But no, I think Master Chewy, I think he's actually got some decent form um, in races of this nature and at this track. So for me, Master Chewy, in what's a, you know, a cork of a race. I'd like to, I would like to have seen JPR1 run a little bit better at Sandan last time to have given that a squeak. Um, although that form does look quite good now with, with Colonel Harry coming out and winning at Weatherby last week. But no, Master Chewy for me. Master Chewy in the Lightning and Novices Chase for Brett Williams. The 150 comes up next. This is the Handicap Chase over two miles of class. Two event and St. Siegel is the 9-4 to four favourite. The King of PRs is 3-1. to one. Ferrero Bamboo 9-2. to two. Triple Trade is 5-1. to one. First Flow 11-2. And Real Stone is 12-1. to one. And Robbie Wilders, you're going to kick things off for this race. Cheers, mate. Yeah, I think St. Siegel uh, most likely winner here. He actually... Um... Oh, I thought he would have won that Ascot race last time if he didn't fall at the last. Uh, mm. Good race. Boot Hill was there. Fred Arms, a lot of uh, a lot of old faces. Uh, I, I think that, that was a good race. I think this is a weaker one. Um, I've just, just always thought he's sort of shaped as if he is going to be a fair bit better than the mark in the 130s. And um, if he is over that, I think he's uh, the most likely winner. OK, St. Seagull for Robbie Wilders. Brett Williams, St. Seagull for you or not? Uh, no, I quite like Ferrero Bamboo here um, for Venetia Williams and Charlie Doyle. Real consistent, coming down to a nice little mark as well at one one three six and dropped some four pounds from last time out. And also, that's one of our price boost races as well. So check out Unibet.co.uk for uh, which horse will be boosted in that race. But uh, Ferrero Bamboo for me in that. Ferrero Bamboo, Venetia Williams, bangs and winners almost every weekend now. So yeah, can't go wrong with Ferrero Bamboo and Tom Park. Who's winning this? Yeah, Freo Bamboo, um, he, he, if you look at his form directly, it looks like he's been dropped four pounds. He's, he actually ran four pounds out of the handicap last time, um, which is why it, it looks like he's running off 140. Um, he, he runs off 136 here, but like, I think the handicapper, he might have made a massive mistake not bumping this horse up. I mean, he ran off a, the equivalent of 140 last time in, in the, the race at Cheltenham stage style running. Now, them two went pretty hard up front but he had stage start beating a long long way out he got into a lovely lovely rhythm up front and was just going really hard at his fences jumping brilliantly and um, like a really well handicapped horse off 140 and um, he maybe did a bit too much in the end but when stage star had, had enough frail bamboo was pulling away from the, the field shake him up harry was the horse that came and got him and beat him by seven lengths in the end but i just think he went a little bit he maybe paid the price at the end to 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 kind of win the race, but it's a good second. I mean, they've absolutely hammered the third and fourth. They've finished 
struck out that washing. I mean, um, I think the drop back to two miles could really allow that exuberance to. He can be really, he can just go really hard up front. And yeah, I just think ugh, 136. Like to me, that was a really well handicapped horse that was running last time um, of 140. So he's got at least four pound in hand. Um, I agree with Rob. Saint Seagull's obviously the one to beat. Um, I think you're right about that Ascot form. Um, however, I just can't let Frail. I, I think this is just one really ha well handicapped horse. Um, so yeah, Frail Bamboo for me. Two votes for Ferrero Bamboo then, and one vote for St. Siegel in the 150 there. Moving on to the 225, it gets really competitive here. The handicap hurdle, this is the Weatherby's Hamilton handicap hurdle over two miles, seven furlongs, another class two event where Nurse Susan is currently topping the market of Unibet 7 2, Bold Endeavour and Gal Road 5 to 1, Mocha Davassi 7 to 1, Ramo is 17 to 2, 9 to 1 about Classic Concord, double figures. About the rest of the field here, Brett Williams, this is a money back if second or third race, I believe, on Sunday, but only available from Sunday morning. Is that right? Yeah, it is indeed. So if you back the second or the third in this race, we will be giving you your money back as cash. And again, another good race, very competitive um, handicap. Nurse Susan, as you said, she is the favourite. She was impressive um, last time at some chat and she's stepping up in trip here, but, you know, she won't quite decisively going away so i wouldn't be concerned at all about the step up um in trip um just talking to nikki henderson about the chances of, of a bold endeavor of course his unibet blog will be out um literally probably as we speak it's been typed up and, and put out live and in bold endeavor i suppose the handicapper loves horses like him because you, you know you know where you stand with him he's so consistent he probably should have won at um at Cheltenham last time but he, he hung a little bit and then his jockey lost his his, his um his stick, which didn't help his chance. But, um, you know, I think Nicky thought he was quite an unlucky loser. Whether he's good enough, again, to win off this mark, giving weight all round, is questionable. But you, you know he's going to put up a good effort. Um, and then that brings you down to to, um, to Gower Road, who's, who's got some good form um, at this at this track. Um, finished place behind Metier in the handicap hurdle um, last year. Um, has been chasing back over hurdles last time at Ascot. That was a fair enough effort behind Crambo obviously stepping back down in grade now. So I think you can make a case for Gower Road. And I just know this is a, this is a meeting that, that Nigel Twiston Davis does tend to target. Obviously, why wouldn't you? The prize money is so good. Yeah, so so Gower Road for me, and what's a, what's a, you know, a good little race. Okay, Gower Road for Brett Williams. There's a slight nod there from Tom Parks. I'm going to come to you next, Tom. Did you give Gower Road a good chance? Yeah, I, fe I fear Gower Road a lot. Um, I've not opted for him. Um, he, he seems to be a horse that, Nigel Tristan Davis, when they really targeted one, and I suspect they really have targeted this one, um, he seems to get backed off the board, and he's just a horse that when I I always get the wrong side of him. Um, so I do fear Gal Road. Um, I'm going to side with Nurse Susan. Um, look, like I just get the feeling that the skeletons think an awful lot of her. Mm. Um, she was disappointing first time out after. a long long layoff 600 days plus um a run before that was actually in the um in the mayor's novice hurdle behind love and en envoir um that was a really good renewal of the mayor's novice um like nurse susan had in impervious party central i think dino blue was in the in the race that day so like there was some good horses in the race so you can mark up that form um she, she's rated 129 like she's she could be a lot better than that um and I just like the way she needed every yard of the. Of, she won at Cheltenham last time. She needed every yard of that over two and a half miles. So the step up to two miles seven, I think, will will just bring out more improvement. She's unexposed. Um, yeah, it's no Susan for me. Yeah, no Susan for Tom Park, Robbie Wilders. This handicap. Hurt yeah, this. Yeah, I fear no Susan. Um, she keeps having a lot of good entries in listed races and group races. The mm. fact that she's still. Going in a handicapped, interesting uh, new trip, interesting angle. I, I just thought Gal Road was still the one to beat, though. Um, I mean, he was given he was given crammed by a pound when they met a Haydock. He was only barely a length length behind him there, and then he was thrown in at the deep end for the Grade One. He's only sent off ten to one for that long walk hurdle. I thought that's that's much shorter than he should have been, considering he was rated only under forty one. He finished uh, seventh there. He's probably as good as he was entitled to. But the handicap has not exactly reacted. He's only two pound higher now, and uh, he's still quite low mileage as a three mile hurdle. It looks like he stays the trip. So I think you're getting a pretty sound each way price there. 
Okay, there we go. Well, that's uh, all three selections for the handicap hurdle at 225. We move on now to the big return of Long Press in the Fleur de Lis chase. Two mile six furlongs here at three o'clock at Lingfield. Class two event. Eight to thirteen is the current price of Unibet about Long Press for this race. Protector at thirteen to eight. And then we're looking at bigger prices. Does he know twenty to one? I will do it twenty two to one. Highland Hunters twenty eight to one. A fullback is fifty to one. It looks a match race here, Robbie, between the top two. Are we with the returning Long Press or the horse that's had a run in the last sort of forty days in, in Protector at? Yeah, I'm, I'm with Long Press, but I'm not going to be backing him at odds on. Mm. I've um, I've backed him. If if you do like him here, I think you'd be better advised to back him for the Gold Cup because the odds of twenty to one will will shorten if he if he wins impressively. I think he is titled, entitled to on form certainly. Um, he's back going left handed. He was he didn't look in in love with going right handed in the King George when last seen, but you know reportedly he's been going really well. Venetia is very good at sort of saddling one from a long layoff. I wouldn't worry about the uh, the time away. And if Protect Track runs like he did in the Betfair chase, then he's got no chance. I know he, I know he was better last time at Cheltenham, but he's got to give Long Press four pounds. And if Long Press is a Gold Cup horse, I think he really should be taking this out. Just quickly, Robbie, I know I want to speed through these, but if you, if Long Press were to win this in decent style, do you think he does become now the, the best of the British for the Gold Cup? Yeah, yeah, best of the British, definitely. Yeah, like uh, off the top of my head, I, I can't really think of a, a, a great like British contender. No. So I think all all robes really well. He's he's the one we're hanging our hats on at the moment, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. Long press. Brett Williams. Uh, I'd imagine this horse. I don't know whether he'll be really popular in the betting on the day. I don't know whether he'll come in for a lot of support. But like Robbie said, he needs to be winning this if he's ever going to be a Gold Cup contender. Oh yeah, I mean, and, and sort of to answer your question again, I mean, I suppose Shiskin would be the the other sort of leading hope for the for the for the for the, for the Gold Cup. So yeah, this will have a bit of an impact on the on the blue ribbon you know you look at the race and you're, you're trying to find a reason to get um long press beaten there isn't really um i'm not worried at all that he hasn't been seen for 391 days venetia williams can get them tuned up having been off the track for two years so that's not an issue at all for me um i think he's won around four times over this trip as well um unlike protect right it was actually staying on really well over three at Chatham last time i'm not entirely convinced the step down in trip is, is, is going to suit him unless they go out and, and make every post a winning one um and then that brings down to does he know for kim bailey of course who won it with, with, with two for gold a couple of years ago so I'm not saying he's a racy target but he obviously knows how to win it and yeah does he know it's obviously going to improve a lot on what we've seen so far um but he's a he was a class or is a classy horse in his own right and i'd also like to see i would do it run well um, again, two sixes is definitely going to be on the short side for him. Um, but I do a lot of work with Sam Thomas. I know the horse has been working well, and you know he ran well in the in the Welsh Grand National last time. But no, there's no doubt about it. Some non press should take all of the beating here, and it'd be nice to see a proper, genuine, you know, candidate emerge from this side of the of the of the, of the sea for the for the Gold Cup because we, we need a good English runner, don't we? We absolutely do. And Tom Park, are you hoping for that as well? The hat trick for non press. Yeah, I'm a big, big long press fan. I think um, if he kind of comes back and retains the ability that we we saw in his novice and and in his first couple of starts in in senior company, then I think he's a big player in the Gold Cup. Um, whether I'd be backing him at like big odds on in this, um, look, he should win. Um, it's a long layoff. Is he going to be absolutely fully wound up for this? Probably not. Um, I'd probably leave him. I think that the player here is, if you were to back Lahon Press, I think you can get 14 to 1 on run and bet for the Gold Cup. Like, that's a no brainer because if he wins this in spectacular style, he's going to be single figures. If he wins this, even grinding it out, he's going to be short than 14 to 1. And if he doesn't win this, I could see them maybe even going back and trip for the Ryanair or maybe just skipping Cheltenham altogether. There's a good chance that if he was to not retain that ability they wouldn't turn up in the gold cup which means you might be getting your money back anyway um so yeah i think 14 to 1 non runner bet for the gold cup is probably actually the play rather than taking short odds here but i'd hope he'd win um like it's a tough task but protector that's a likable enough horse and if there was stamina if there was fitness concerns he could maybe take advantage of that um but yeah uh, he, he ought to be winning but yeah gold cup non runner up bet would be the play for me Okay, yeah, I think a lot of punters might be looking at that in terms of the fact that 
knowing that he he should go and win this and he'll end up a lot shorter for a gold cup so we'll just wait and see we just hope the the old long press is back the final race we move on to then is a staying test it's the 335 it's the surrey national handicap chase class three event over three mile five furlongs regal blue john joe neil nick schofield top market 11 2 animal is six to one o'connell 13 to hold that tort and not sure a seven to one 11 to one about fernhill mumbo jumbo 12 to one bar these extra places has got to be in a national hasn't there Brett? always yeah you you can always rely on unibet can't you we are paying four <laughs> places each way uh, in this what is it the surrey national there we go so i want to say sponsors i get in trouble i get shot um <laughs> yeah um animal um, is the horse so i just come down to and um, you know it's a race i wouldn't want to to be honest get too involved in and um, james bowen obviously a, a very positive jockey booking ran well at market race and last time one on soft ground at some sand down before that and it will be quite a traditional grind i would have thought you know come 335 um and then i know it's going to be hard for him to carry top weight but i do think fern hill could just be interesting um had the wind operation got the tongue time for the first time and um, but again just the weight is i think is going to tower for me in that race so so for that reason i'm going to stick with animal Okay, Animal, Brett Williams, Fern Hill, potentially the one that to be the worry. Tom Park, who are you with? Yeah, I think it's going to be an incredible day for the Charlie Deutsch and Venetia Williams uh, duo because I really like Hold That Tart here. Um, it's hard to say that, isn't it? Hold That Tart. I sure hold that tart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, look, from when he won his, um, his first race this season at Ascot, um, Venetia Williams had like a twinkle in her eye about this horse. Like, I think that this he's clearly had problems, um, but I just get the impression that they think that they've kind of got to the bottom of the now, and he certainly looks like he has on his on his last couple of starts. He's looked really professional. Um, for that, because he kind of lost his way a little bit, he's started this season off a of mark in 122. Now, he's only up eight pounds for winning two races since of 130. I don't think that goes anywhere near the limit of this horse's ability, um, and I, I'm just—I'm actually surprised he's not favourite here. I thought he'd be—I think he's a, a really solid bet. I know it's—it's it's a really competitive race, but I just think that he is the the one that could just be miles better than these. Um, I think he's the class of the field. He's got eleven, twelve to carry, but you know, I think I think he's got a good bit in hand. I, I think he'll—I think he'll win this. Just do me a favour, Parky, with Venetia Williams and Charlie Deutsch. Back hold that sort for our bamboo and just don't forget to put Jello in that that treble. Just I know I'll have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you definitely will. <laughs> Robbie Wilders, the Surrey National, who's winning this? Yeah, mate. Respect to uh, hold that tort, certainly. But I have a bit more respect for Dr. Kananga at quite a big price. Um, ben Clark training the last winner of this, the 2022 running. And uh, I was actually quite interested in this horse for the uh, classic chase at Warwick. He didn't get declared in the end. But he's, he was a bit of an eye-catcher on his first start of the season at Haydock. He travelled well for quite a long way. his first run following wind surgery. Uh, second run back, he's down from... He was rated 140 when he ran in the, uh, in the beach uh, in December 2022. He's only had a handful of runs since, and he's down £15. Pound. And I imagine a, a big national like this has been the long-term aim. So Dr Kananga's one I could see going well. Dr Kananga, the one to end our preview of the Lingfield Winter Millions Festival. So there we go, racing covered for the weekend. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we do get racing on Sunday there at Lingfield. In our final part of the podcast, we are going to be looking at any other bets and getting our best bets. But before then, have a look at these offers from Unibet. Want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uniboosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Post. Cast brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet, Sam Hart, Tom Park, Robbie Wilders and Brett Williams. Taking you through the weekend action, we get into our final part of the show where we look at any other bets and get the best bets for the weekend. We have some quality racing over in Ireland this weekend. Tom Park, I'm going to come to you. The 135 there is a grade two chase over two mile, four furlongs. Some cracking, cracking horses in this. What do we make of this one? 
Yeah, Belter. Um, obviously, Alaho coming back. Um, he's he's your short price favourite. Um, Envoir Lens in there. Um, Ryan Air winner, of course. Appreciate it. Um, like it's a belting race. Um, I'm keen to take on Alaho. Yeah, there was just something in his King George run that I didn't like, um, and I just don't think he is anywhere near the Alaho that we have come to love over the last few years, particularly at Cheltenham. Now, he may well bounce back and um, he might blow this field apart, but I, I just think we are still 10 now appreciated, which is the same age as Alaho, which is quite unbelievable yeah. to think. Um, but um, I've just got a feeling that he's coming to the boil. Um, and I've liked his runs over over further. Drop back to two mile four is going to be right back in his. It, this is his kind of thing, and I just think that he might serve it up to appreciate. I can just see him sitting in. Um, he might serve it up to Alaho. Sorry, I can see him sitting in behind. Um, and I think Alaho is. I think that kind of kick from the front may well have have gone, and I just think that appreciate it might might come and strike with some fresher legs. Albeit he is a ten year old, which is. Unbelievable. He's, I feel like he was running in bumpers as a know, as yeah. two years ago. So, but yeah, um, yeah, appreciate it. He's going to turn over Aloha, I think. Okay, there we go. Yeah, a, a decent price. I think appreciate it'll be on the day. It's the one thirty-five at Furless on Sunday. Robbie Wilder has already alerted me during the advert break that he hasn't got any other selections, so we'll get his best bet shortly. And Brett Williams, what else have we got going on this weekend? What's happened with Unibet? Is there any other offers, markets that we should be focusing on? We've been as we're talking about the racing on your weather, we might as well mention, of course, the, the winter dive. I was about to say the Lingfield winter dive, but it's not. It's moved now to, to Southern, yeah, hasn't yeah. it? Really confused me. But yeah, so we're out with the winter dive, which of course takes place from Southern on the 24th of February. Lord North is currently our 11 to 4 favourite, 3 to 1 um, Dubai on it, and 4 to 1 Middle Earth at the moment. So go on to unibet.co.uk. Of course, if Lord North, I think, I think and he's won it the last two years, hasn't he, I think. Um, and then he's going to go on and run in the in the Dubai Turf at St Maidan. So yeah, we are the first out with the winter derby. So go on to unibet.co.uk. I'll certainly be getting stuck into that with my love for the flat. So I'll have a look at that after this show has finished. Now it's time to get the best bets for the weekend. I'm going to kick things off in the free ten at Lingfield, the Winter Oaks uh, Phillies handicap. There, I think this was also grand at the top of the market. Well, Tom Parks made an excellent case. Really impressed by this horse's win at Lingfield, Newcastle prior. The Crisfords obviously targeting this race with the two at the top of the market. Twirling's obviously going to be a massive worry with Ryan Moore on board, but I think this race has been set up for Oh So Grand. I think this four-year-old's actually improving as well, so I'll be taking Oh So Grand in the free turn at Lingfield as my nap. Tom Park, you'll be happy the fact that Oh So Grand's been added in, but who's going to be your nap this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to side with Nurse Susan in the 225 at Lingfield on Sunday. Uh, for reasons mentioned earlier, like I think she's really well handicapped potentially off 129, and the step up in trips really going to suit her. Skeletons are in flying form, mm. um, so yeah, it was a little bit of a toss up. I fancy a few of the Venetias on Sunday as well, but um, yeah, Nurse Susan um, for the Skeletons 225 at Lingfield. Don't worry, Parker. We know you're going to be on that treble, so that's all that matters. <laughs> Robbie Wilders, who's the best bet for you this weekend? Yes, mate. Two o'clock at Lingfield, plant a dream, Saturday. Okay, plant a dream for Robbie Wilders in the two o'clock at Lingfield on Saturday. And Brett Williams, your nap, please. Well, the good news is we are price boosting in the Furley Lees chase, so you should get some decent value with, with Lon Press. But I still think it could be a good afternoon for Venetia Williams with Ferro Bambo. Uh, in the 150, been a model of consistency. I think it's reasonably well treated. Uh, so, Ferro Bamboo for me at Lingfield. Ferro Bamboo, that's on Sunday for Brett Williams. And you can get these all boosted as soon as the show has been uploaded. You can see it on YouTube. You'll see that all of these are boosted. Naps are boosted with Unibet. So, do go to unibet.co.uk and check those out. Now, I've got a bit of short time just to see what people are up to this weekend. I'll fly through Tom Park. I'd imagine you're not watching the all ever action. Uh, on ITV, what are you going to be up to? I won't be watching any of it, unfortunately. My wife's birthday this weekend, so uh, we're off to Edinburgh. So um, she doesn't know, but she won't be watching the post postcast. I wouldn't have thought so. <laughs> uh, there won't be anything there. But yeah, off to Edinburgh. So going even colder than where we are here in the northeast, but um, that should be good. Well, happy birthday to your lovely wife. Hope you have a lovely time in Edinburgh. Robbie Wild, as your plans this weekend? Yes, mate. Um, going to go on a long cycle around Richmond Park tomorrow morning. 
I think I need it. I've not done much cardio this year, so let's get that rest and heart rate down. And then I'm going to watch all this brilliant racing at Lingfield <laughs> on Saturday. And then I'm going to probably eat a takeaway in the evening. And then I've got nothing on on Sunday. Yourself? Okay. No, I'll just go. Well, I'm probably going to be saying I'm just going to be relaxing. I think I've got a little bit of um, a little bit of work to do around the house actually, so I'll um, I'll probably get that all done. I mean, you mentioned earlier that I was in a hotel room, Robbie, but that is not the case. I was going to say they'll clean that for it's, you. It's my room. <laughs> don't worry about that. Brett Williams, where are you this week? Are you actually going racing at all? Um, fingers crossed if it's on. If it's not, I've been invited to lunch um, in. Um, Cat in uh, in Oxford, so I should be enjoying a bit of lunch there. But no, um, enjoying a day on the sofa tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that um, Oaks race where I'm going to have the Queen's Regent win. Okay, well we'll just wait and see. I mean that is my nap in there, so we'll we'll just wait and see. Uh, that's it for this week's postcast. We're going to be back again next weekend on Thursday. We'll be back. It's Cheltenham Trials Day along with Doncaster. We'll be looking at Brett. Will be back with me. We'll also have Keith Melrose and James Stevens, our West Country correspondent, will be on for Cheltenham which should be exciting. But until then, remember to gamble responsibly, and we'll see you again very soon.